Hello everybody, this is Carver Killed the Cat, and welcome to your 12th Lua 5.2 tutorial. In this video, we're going to be going over running external Lua code from files and strings. So there are three functions that we can use to do this. The first one is do file. The second one is load file. And the third one is just load. So the first function we're going to go over is do file. And do file, what it does is it takes a file address as a parameter and then it will open that file and then it will run it as Lua code. So we're basically just running Lua code from another file. So before we can use this we have to create a new Lua file to run the code from and I've already done that so what you want to do is you want to go to the same directory that you have the Lua file that you're working in and you want to create a new Lua file and you can call it whatever you want I just called it external but make sure that you have the postfix.lua at the end or else it won't be recognized as a Lua file. So I named mine external. And unfortunately the way Lua 5.2 works, when you're opening files you have to give it the entire file address. So to do that you want to right click right here, click copy address, and then go back to our parameter and just paste it in. So you see we have the full file address here and then backslash and then whatever the name of the file is. In my case it's ex oops, external.lua. And also because we have backslashes we need to escape them so that they so that uh, the string doesn't think that we're trying to say backslash w is an escape sequence. So just make these double backslashes. So now what this code is going to do is it's going to run the do file function and that's going to open our external.lua file and it's going to run the code in that file as lua code. So if we look at our external.lua file we see we just have a for loop that will print hello ten times so when we run this code that's what should happen and it is we get, ten, we get hello ten times. So that's the do file function it's the most simple of the three functions but it's also the most expensive to run because it's calling both load file, which we'll get to next, and a few other functions to make sure there are no errors. So uh, you should only use this in when you're just trying to, trying to do something simple and quick. You shouldn't use this for any kind of complicated file loading. And this is also the least flexible if uh, this code were to have an error. So let's just put an error in here. Just put an H at the end of this. doesn't really matter what we do. So now if we try to run this, we get an error, and it just says syntax error near end at line 3. So line 3 is where we call do file, but that really doesn't tell us much. It doesn't say that we'd need to go into this file, go to line 3 here, and then we have an H here that shouldn't be there. But that error is hard to find. So for anything except very simple stuff like this, you should use load file. So what load file does is it loads the external code in but instead of running it it encapsulates it into a function and then returns that function so if we were to set f to load file then we could call f and we'd get an error I think that's because we still have the error in our file here so if we get rid of that now we run it we get our uh, 10 hellos again so the load file function put all the code from our external file into a function and then return that and then we set f as a reference to it. So this allows us to be a bit more flexible, we don't have to immediately run the code that we load in, and it's also not quite as expensive a function to run, because all of these functions are very expensive so you shouldn't use them too much, but the do file is by far the most expensive. So we can actually write a function that will do pretty much the exact same thing as the do file function. Uh, the actual definition of the do file function may be a bit more complicated, but uh, the function we're about to write will do the same thing. So, if we write function, then new do file, we can just give it an arbitrary name, and then file name is the parameter, and end. So what we want to do first is we want to load the file in, so we will say f equals assert, and assert is just a function for handling errors, it makes uh, calling load file a bit more safe, and I'll uh, talk more about it in a later tutorial, but 
just know that it helps us handle errors for now. So we say load file, and we paste our file name in. Or actually, we wouldn't do that. We would give it our file name parameter. So now we're just loading uh, whatever file is given as a parameter to the new do file function. And then we would return, and I'll tell you why in a second, we would return the call to f. So the reason we're returning the call to f is because in your blocks of code that you have in your external file, you're allowed to have a return value that's outside of a function. You're allowed to do this anywhere on Lua, but uh, besides here and a few more isolated cases, the return value really won't do anything. So if we were to return just some random number like 100 here, this return is also going to get encapsulated encapsulated into the function when load file puts this whole code all of this code into a function. So it will become the return value to the f function that we're setting the function return by load file to here. So now this f function is going to return 100 because that's what we return in the external file, and the do file function will always return the return value of the code that it executes. So we're just mimicking the return value here. Or, I mean, the do file function here. So now, if we call new do file, and we give it the file name as a parameter, and we run it, we get hello 10 times, and then if we were to print the return value of new do file, we get hello 10 times, and then the return value of the code from the external file, which is 100. So the last function is the load function, and it does the exact same thing as the load file function, except it creates the function out of code that you give it in a string instead of code that you give it from a file. So we could say f equals load, uh, something simple, we could just say print hello. So you give, uh, we have to, let's see, we give it backslash, actually it's easier just not to use anything with quotes, so we'll say print 20. So now this string that we give load as a parameter will be executed as Lua code, or it will be put into a function and returned by load, and then uh, we set f as a reference to that function, so now if we were to call f, then we get 20, because that is uh, the code that we're executing, print 20. So calling load like this is, or this entire uh, group of statements as a whole, is kind of the equivalent of saying g equals, or you could even say function g, no parameters, print 20, and end. So these two groups of, oh, and then we have to call g, we call g, and now we get 20 twice. So these two groups of statements are almost exactly identical. The only difference is that this group of statements will take significantly longer because the load function is such an expensive function to run and creating a new function and then calling it is uh, incredibly inexpensive, com or at least compared to the load function. So unless you need to use load, which you don't usually, then you should always create functions just using the normal function declarations. Uh, one way you could use load is if you wanted to have like a little script running in a game or something, and you wanted the user to be able to just enter in code and then that code would be executed and do something to the game, then you could use load for something like that. You'd read an input and that would be whatever code you'd, the user wanted, and then you could load that as Lua code with the load function. So that's an example of how you would use load, but for something like this where you're just uh, calling load with a string literal, there's almost no need for it ever. So avoid using load as much as possible just because it's so expensive. So the last thing we're going to go over is a small technicality with uh, local variables when you're using the load function versus just creating a function normally. So Let's create an example. We'll create a global variable x and set it to 10. And then we'll create a local variable x and set that to 20. So 
this may seem weird since X isn't in any... Well, X would... It seems like X is in the global scope of the program, but really this entire file is uh, a block of code. So outside of this file, our global X would exist, but our local X would not exist. So uh, consider this a uh, separate scope, just like inside of a function or an if statement or for loop or something. And another thing that may seem weird is that we have two variables with the same name, one local and one global. Uh, usually, this is what we're going to go over. In most cases, Lua will always choose the most local form of the variable, so if we were to do something like create a function f that said x equals x plus 1, and then I guess actually we can, yeah, we'll do that. We'll print x, then oops, then end. So there are two x's. Lua will choose the most local form of x, which is in this case this x, which is set to 20. So now if we were to call f, oops, then we would get 21. Uh, but if we were to use the load function, so we'll say g equals load, and create the equivalent function, so x equals x plus 1, and then print x, and then we can call g down here the same way. Now if we run this, we get 21, and then we get 11. So for some reason, the load function just used the global version of x instead of the most local version of x. And the reason for that is it's kind of just a technicality with the way that Lua compiles code. Uh, when we call the load function, this is considered a separate block of code from this. So this has its own completely separate scope. So to the load function, or the code that's being compiled with the load function, this local version of x doesn't exist. So it's as if this has its own uh, parallel function scope. So be careful when you're using the load function like this, because, or just remember that uh, local variables defined within the block that you call load won't exist when you're compiling code with, or to the code that's being compiled with load. So this really won't come up much, but just be aware that this does ex exist as a problem. So that's all we're going to go over for this video. This, these three functions aren't used very much. They're really for very specialized purposes. But you may end up using them, so they are very good to know. And even though, like I've said, they're very expensive functions, in the right situation, they are pretty useful. So uh, in the next video, we're going to go over coroutines, which is kind of like Lua's version of threads. So we'll get to that in the next video. Oh, and one last thing before I forget. So I opened up a Twitter account for this YouTube channel. So from now on, any announcements about the channel, so like what videos will be going up this week or in the following week, and uh, if I'm ever going to miss a video, anything like that will be posted on the Twitter account from now on. So I'll post a link to that in the description. I'll also probably add an annotation on this video. And if you want to hear uh, any announcements uh, before the videos come out, then they will be there. So I recommend you follow that. And this is the only time I'm going to plug it, so you'll never have to hear about this again. Uh, it will just be in the description of my videos from now on. So I recommend following that if you want to know what we're going to be doing. So that's all now. I'll see you in the next video.